We are live. So excited to see folks already in the chat. Folks saying they're excited to be here, which I love to see. But um, honestly, like in a year like this, there's some folks out there feeling uh, a little bit raw, a little bit tough, end of the day, end of the week. So I'd love to see folks sharing some wins, but also sharing your losses. Um, if you can't commiserate here about how things are going for you really um, here on Desmos Live, where can you commiserate? I'm Dan Meyer. I'm the chief academic officer at Desmos. Was at one point a high school math teacher, but as I said in my newsletter this week, um, there is, has never been a greater difference between the people uh, like me who talk about teaching and people who actually teach. Things I've never once done, uh, teach fully virtually, uh, number one, or two, risk my life to teach, which is how a lot of you folks are doing it right now. If you were out there with students wearing masks and whatnot, you are you are an essential worker risking your life, and that's not lost on us here at Desmos. So we're here to support you folks today. Um, a few things are about to happen. Let me uh, pop open. Um, yeah, here we go. Some stuff we're up to here today. Uh, number one, um, we will be, let's see here. We're going to release a new activity never before seen by uh, folks outside of Desmos and our curriculum, and that's going to be uh, called Flags. We're going to bring on um, young homie Zach Miller, uh, a Desmos lesson developer. It's going to be a blast, and he's going to share with you folks um, three, count it, three uh, new activities. Just uh, briefly give you a, a tour of those, and um, and we will we will vote a new activity into existence. You folks will get a, um, a code to go to a poll, and whichever one you folks um, want to see, in the world, that will be the one that we will release next. Um, after that, I'm gonna share with you folks, I wanna highlight someone who is doing their best in a bad year. I just wanna say like, this is a bad year. It's okay to call this a bad year. Um, you know, let's, let's not be heroes out there. You folks should not be heroes. As uh, someone tweeted once, a, a hero is someone who deserves a, a pay raise. You call people heroes when you owe them more money, um, owe them more protection. So we're not saying like uh, people who are rocking it, people who are doing great. Uh, this is uh, people who are just like, slogging through a bad year in a way that deserves notice. We got one person, I'm gonna call that person out um, at the end of the show. It'll be like 25, 30 minutes, we'll be here, pop in, pop out, ask a question, say what's up, and uh, we will uh, start right now. Um, so here is today's new activity. Um, it concerns uh, the y-intercepts and, and translation, translations. Uh, uh, we first start with uh, linear equations that have uh, a proportional relationship, y-intercept of zero, and then all of a sudden, whoa, we got positive y-intercepts. How do you help students make that change? Well, as you might or might not know, we are in the process of creating um, a, a curriculum based off of the very popular, very good illustrative mathematics open up resources curriculum. What they did with this exact same lesson is they connected context. They know, like we do, like a lot of great educators do, that making connections is what the game is all about. Connections between um, early knowledge that students have and bring into the classroom with uh, new knowledge we want to offer them. Connections between representations like, um, like uh, tables, equations, graphs, numbers, um, and also uh, connections between context from outside the, the classroom uh, to mathematical representations, which is what they did right here with a physical card sword. I would love to know, how are you folks right now, if you are teaching remotely, how on earth are you doing card sort activities with your students? I mean, do you ask them to like print it out? Do they um, do you, they come to the, the school site and pick things up? Like I, I honestly logistically am so curious how that works. Now, we have digital card sorts. Lots of you folks know that, but that is not the direction we took this one. We wanted to create connections, but we have the power to create some very special kinds of connections. So what we did is we created an animation of a flag and there it is. There's a connection for students, a connection between a graph and a flagpole. Let me ask students like, think about what they notice. Um, uh, just, just think about it at a very uh, su sensory superficial level is totally fine. And what we did is we asked them to do what lots of people do, and that's to turn math into math or turn the context into more math. So here's the flag. Tell us about it. What's its speed? Um, that's stuff that you'll see in lots of paper-based curriculum. It starts with a context and it kind of chews that up and turns it into mathematics. And then we kind of move the math around and represent it in different ways. But what I love about what the team at Desmos does is it allows us to turn the math back into the world. Rather than just like put the world in the math blender and then enjoy that slurry, we then can turn the math back into the world. So right here, we uh, invite students to um, sketch the height of this new flagpole, flag B over time. Hang on here, there's A, okay, there's A. I'm thinking starts low, but it wins. Okay, this one starts higher, but it loses. Okay, so I'm gonna like mess with this Y-intercept here and go with this, is this right here? and 
instead of saying students, hey, you're right or you're wrong, if you've been around the block with Desmos, you know that we don't, we don't do that as, as often as we can. We wanna give students feedback that is effective. And when you say to a student, hey, you're right, they are done thinking about the question, right? And say, say you're wrong, that also it's, that's helpful in a lot of ways, but it doesn't give students enough information about how and why they were wrong to then do something about it. So what we do here, as you folks might know, is we just reflect your graph back to you into the world. And so right here, I can see that I, let's see, what, what happened here? My, I'm moving too fast. I started at a great spot, but I'm moving too fast. And I want to end lower. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna start back at 16 right here as my y-intercept and end maybe right there and try that out. And ooh, look at that, pretty, very clean. And this is how we played it with this uh, with this particular mathematical understanding. And what's cool about this is when we are able, when we have um, such, uh, when we have these, this ability digitally to give students such rich um, feedback and to connect the representation so tightly, we don't do, we don't need to do like six different contexts like this right here. We can dive super deep into one context. Like students know flags in ways that they don't necessarily know a piggy bank or a tablet, um, you know, internet service. Like those were kind of like dipping into the, just below the surface of each context here and then coming back up into another one. We're going deep into flags right here, folks. And so what that lets us do then is invite your students to think about, you know, uh, uh, flags in uh, equation uh, representation or numerical representation, whereas all we did in the original lesson was just graphs. So that's pretty exciting. We now have this uh, this equation representation, H equals, oh my word, I'm so curious what would happen if I did a positive y-intercept and a negative slope. It's gonna break. My computer's gonna start smoking and shut down and I'll see you folks next week for Dozens Live. No, it does it, wild, cool, very cool. Yeah, we love to make as much room as possible for students to express their mathematical thinking. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a wishing machine here. Like I wish I could do this or a wonder generator. And, um, and so this should work no matter what here, whatever, what can I put in? What if I put in a constant number, H equals 10, what's that gonna do? Just hangs out there. Lazy flag, lazy. Anyway, that lesson is called Flags. It is just released as of the day for you folks, if you're working um, in middle school math and you want to give students an experience around um, linear equations with y-intercepts, hit it, folks. Grab that. Um, type in flags at teacher.desmos.com or hit the show notes uh, below the YouTube video description um, right here. And uh, that link will be in there. So here's the deal, folks. I am uh, very excited to now bring, uh, bring to you folks um, my good colleague, let me see, is this uh, next tab? Oh yeah, if you want, uh, worth saying, like if you want a whole, you know, middle school worth of activities just like that, um, definitely head over to uh, uh, learn.desmos.com um, slash curriculum. Let's see if I got my uh, overlays working for me here. Let's see, da, 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 da. yep, not Zach, not your turn, Zach. Yeah, head over to learn.desmos.com slash curriculum and, uh, press, uh, smash that apply for 2021, 22 button. Um, I can tell you folks, uh, just between you and me and Zach, we are opening up the floodgates wide um, in, uh, in, Jan in in the winter here, January, I believe. I'm going to be inviting a whole bunch of folks in. So if you're feeling pretty frustrated with how digital virtual learning is going um, for you and your colleagues uh, right now, you should definitely uh, get on that button and see if we can help you out. So What's next? That's not it. Um, we're gonna bring to you folks right now, uh, one of my favorite mathematical thinkers, um, Zach Miller, who uh, used to run math for the Summit Charter, Charter School Network, um, has been a uh, Desmos developer for several years now, lesson developer. We never let our lesson developers out. You know, For one thing, uh, they work best in darkness, so we kind of keep them down below ground. And for two, um, these folks are so talented um, that we worry if we let them out, folks like Zach, you know, our competitors will come in, uh, you know, with unmarked vans and just like grab those people and put them to work at, over at their, at their setups. And we don't want that. So this is a pretty big deal uh, that Zach is coming on. Uh, would you folks uh, uh, give Zach a uh, warm welcome in the chat? And I'm going to uh, bring him on right now. One second, folks. Just like staring at things here, Zach. What am I doing? Where are you, Zach? <laughs> hey, there's Zach. I got you now. All right, I'm gonna bring myself. I'm here. I'm unmuted. Too. Yeah, nice. Uh, Zach, tell me about yourself, and then um, Zach's gonna share with you uh, three activities. Tell them what they are, and um, and uh, let's let's see a, a little sample of what's behind the scenes. 
So these folks, discriminating choosy consumers, uh, can decide which one they want us to release uh, widely here. Over to you, Zach. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Dan, and really happy to be here. Thanks for letting me out of the, uh, the curriculum cave to uh, talk to some people. Um, it's exciting. I uh, hope you can, and maybe Dan, you can help me out. Can you hear me? Can you see me okay? Can you see a screen that says toothpicks and tiles? Are you getting Cannot excited? I see the screen yet. We got that. I'm going to get Ooh. myself out of here, turn on picture and picture. That's real tiny. And then there we go. You're up. Toothpicks and tiles. Over to you, Zach. All right. Yeah. So we got, as Dan said, we got three activities, uh, and I'm excited to share this first one right away toothpicks and tiles. Uh, the all three you're going to see today were built for seventh grade, but one thing that really excites me about uh, this one especially is it can really, it was fun for adults to do some of the math here. It could be fun for high schoolers, it could be fun for kids of all ages. So let me get right into it. I'll stop talking about it and show you the actual thing. Uh, we're talking about an L shape here. This uh, L shape, we have two of them, um, and we're talking about border toothpicks and border tiles, uh, different ways you could surround that L shape. Uh, we're just going to start by uh, counting them. Nice and simple. So how many toothpicks? Uh, I got eight by my count there. Uh, and I think, uh, 12. Let's see if I counted right. We're just gonna check that. And, and like we often do at Desmos, uh, we'll, we'll show you what you put in and see if it checks out. And in this case, yeah, it does. Um, we're gonna scale up that L shape next and just kind of get, get a little wild here with, with toothpicks and tiles. Uh, if we're scaling up, I'm gonna guess everything's double, right? 16 toothpicks, maybe 24 tiles, and, and let's just see how that plays out. 16 toothpicks, looking good. Uh-oh, we, we ran into a little issue here, and what we're stumbling across is we got a relationship that is proportional, um, and if you're a seventh grade teacher, you know where this is going next. We got a relationship that maybe is predictable in a way, but not proportional. Uh, so. I'm gonna give our, our viewers here uh, just a, a shortcut into what relationship we're gonna be looking at. Soon we're gonna figure out um, that tiles, in this case, are gonna be four more than toothpicks. Always, when we have a pattern like this. Uh, and, that, and then we're just gonna kinda <laughs> really go wild with it. We're gonna look at stage uh, one, two, and three and start talking about where we might see 100 toothpicks or 100 tiles and whether that's even possible, whether that's even a thing. Uh, and again, if you have a proportional relationship, that's something you could probably do just by multiplying knowing your, your eight tables. If you have these uh, border tiles, this non-proportional relationship, it's a little tricky uh, and we're not letting you count anymore. So we're gonna have to use some math to figure that out. But where it gets really fun uh, is when we actually ask you to predict, like. If there is a stage that uses 100 border tiles, which one is it? Like, is it stage 15? And as we often do, when you input a number, when you do something, we will show you the consequences of that choice. We'll see that stage 15 is, is not gonna work, um, but I think stage 12 might. And let's see those 100 tiles. Let's see if I'm remembering this right. Yeah, looking good. Uh, and this is when things really just start to go off the rails and I get really excited because this is where for actual Desmos employees, other adults, other teachers, uh, this is fun and, and actually somewhat challenging. Um, we're gonna see what patterns really hold up across different sorts of shapes. So if I make a different shape here and look at stages one, two, and three, uh-oh, like is this gonna be predictable in the same way? Are we still gonna have that Border tiles are four more than toothpicks. Maybe we will for this pattern, I think. Yeah, but let's, if we try another, like where, where I really invite you to have some fun thinking about the math is like where that pattern breaks. We see the plus four, plus four, but what the heck is going on there? So if you can find uh, patterns that will break this, uh, break this relationship, of always four more tiles than toothpicks. This is the challenge uh, my colleague Christopher Danielson put to me that I put to you all. Uh, like, how can you break this pattern and why is that breaking happening? What happens when we start doing some real bonkers uh, kinds of designs uh, with toothpicks and tiles? Toothpicks and tiles, really fun problem space for you all to um, explore. And, uh, you know, it, I'm not going to play favorites, but it, it's a good one. And I hope uh, you vote 
I hope you consider it. These are, these are all, your, all your children here, Zach. You know, no favorites here. Yeah, yeah. I know. But we can talk stop, about it. You stop. know, some days, different days. Yeah. All right. Take a, <laughs> let's see some something else here. Folks in the chat are loving it here. People are talk, calling out um, CPM does a bunch of this kind of work. And we're just like loving what technology can add to these kind of visual pattern problems. Fun wins and all over this. Um, also with her visual patterns website. And yeah, like, uh, like uh, our, our friend here. Jessica, Jessica calls out, there's lots of ways now to approach this and they can, they can guess and check if they need to as one way to start their way into thinking about the mathematics. Dig this so much. Love the smarts that are going on in the chat right now. Let's see some more here, Zach. All right. Um, so the next two are activities where, you know, the content maybe isn't the most exciting. Like there, it's not guaranteed to be your biggest wins um, of, your, of your classroom year. Uh, and so the topics we have left are combining like terms, very few students' favorite topic, um, and solving and graphing inequalities. And But we're up to the challenge. And we said, how can we uh, make that fun? And and one way, at least one way we've done for both of them um, is making a, a game and creating a sort of problem space that I hope you'll find fun. We find pretty fun, pretty delightful. Um, this one's called Shira the Sheep. And let's, I'm just going to show you what we oh, got here. They're not ready for this, Zach. Don't do it to them. <laughs> uh, Shira the sheep loves eating grass. She does not like water. And that's all I'm going to tell you for now. Let's, let's see what she does if we just press enter. Pretty low floor here. Ooh, I don't think Shira is going to be very happy with that. She ate some grass, but we got a pretty angry sheep face. Uh, she does not like that water. So I don't know. Let's... Tinker with this, maybe I have her go the other direction um, so that she stays out of that water. All right, all right. Um, she's no longer soaking wet, but she uh, doesn't seem very happy. It's not a happy sheep face. So I don't know, let's let's maybe move that over to, uh, to 10 so she gets more grass. Maybe that will keep her happier. <laughs> And I think we're getting warmer. But I like love that little quite... that little blade of grass right there. Kills me every time. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. Get that blade I of grass. Think we know, I think we know we're missing there. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's do it. I think we will get. Oh yeah. She does a little backflip. We got a party hat. We're ready to go. Okay. So that's our warm up. That's it. That's just the warm up. Uh, now let's talk about solving an inequality. And, and this is a lesson that's supposed to come pretty late in the unit on inequality. So kids kind of get the basics of this and we just kind of turn this into a game so they're practicing a little bit more fun. Um, let's see what happens if we, I don't know, do something weird here, like X equals five. We're just gonna get a, oh. <laughs> we just got a lazy sheep who's not happy. She's sort of stuck right there. Um, <laughs> this is one drawback here is it's almost more fun to get them wrong. Uh, if we crumble off that cliff, she is in the water, unhappy again. But no, let's let's do this for real. X is greater than three. Uh, let's get that Shira backflip. Oh yeah, that's that's the Shira we like to see. Um, uh, we as we often do at Desmos, we kind of scale things up a little bit, and we no longer show you uh, the the field. You don't see the grass, uh, and we invite you to sketch and see how that kind of syncs up with where you think the grass might be. So uh, here we go. The inequalities are also getting a little bit more complicated. Um, I can move the five over and I know that something's happening around eight. Um, oh, I should probably fill that in because we want that uh, equals to, and then let's send it that way. That's my thinking and, and we'll see how that um, jives with my, my guess as well. See if I predicted that well. Yeah, feeling good. Give me another backflip, Shira. Yes. That's what I love to see. Um, we have some variations on that, but that's the gist of Shira the Sheep. Uh, we kind of keep it simple and, and hope you have fun practicing. Um, let's keep it going. Yeah, I dig it. Um, yeah, and keep people, it going. people are out there have, with a very tough choice to make, toothpicks and tiles, tackling some very challenging, interesting math in a very vivid way. Shira the Sheep, though, happens to be a sheep. So that's a tough one for folks. Um, be thinking which one you're voting for. Last one's coming up right now. Zach, take us home. Yeah. All right. Uh, so once again, uh, a topic that maybe isn't going to be kids' favorite, but we can still do some things to make it fun um, and maybe make it more exciting, give more choice, give some work some strategy in there. That's as, um, among our uh, approaches when we have a, a topic that we need to sort of spruce up. Um, so we were inspired by Boggle. 
here we go. Let's see if we can uh, click two of these squares and select two more squares and write their sum using the fewest number of terms. Um, I had some strategy in mind when picking those two that uh, you might be able to predict, but let's see how we're doing. Yeah, looking good. Um, and of course, we're gonna ratchet this up a little bit uh, in difficulty and give us a three by three kind of uh, environment here. So I don't know, let's, uh, let's try those X plus one and six, just to show you what happens if, uh, I don't know, maybe you think that's six X plus one. We'll give it a little shake, uh, give you another chance there. And in fact, I think we give you infinite chances. Uh, and the goal here is to really knock off this whole board. And, oh man, it's gonna start getting harder pretty soon. Yep, 4x plus four. I don't know, I, and, and it leaves you with, if you try to just select two, you wanna knock that whole board off. So we're gonna do three of these. I left the three hardest for last, and I'm not gonna try to do this uh, in front of a live audience and make a fool of myself. Uh, but that's the idea, that's Boggle. Um, do it. Just, make... just kidding, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Hey, is, tell, tell us, just, Zach, is there, a way to, is there a way to be strategic about the choices? Like, I don't know, if you pick two of them strategically, they wind up adding to zero. I, I didn't catch it fast enough here, but is that is that embedded here? I'm just curious. Yeah, there's all sorts of um, uh, uh, different strategies. I think uh, oh, I in one, it, yeah, sorry, I'm jumping around too much, but um, one screen that is maybe the hardest screen we have in all of seventh grade, and it's kind of an extra challenge, is one where we give you a precise expression you need to add to, like 5x minus eight. And so you might be hunting around for uh, ways you can make 5x. So like minus 3x and 8x might be a promising one. Um, but even if you select that and get it, this just like has some, some depth to it because there's more. There's more pairs, sometimes triplets, um, where your challenge is to like try to make 5x and then see if the minus eight pans out as well. So. It's, it will challenge your uh, your your sharpest students. It will challenge adults. Um, it will be offer tons of practice on combining like terms. Uh, it really is. I think it's a, a big hit, and it's a tough decision for the peoples to make. Yeah, Zach, really appreciate you just sharing the fantastic work. I I, I know uh, you know this is not just your work, so I don't want to just like put this all on you, all this awesomeness. It takes um what do you want to say a village? I don't know. It takes a, a lot of caves, um, a lot of curriculum caves at Desmos to make this happen. Anyone you want to call out here um, while people are thinking about their votes, also help build this. Oh man, too many give people. Um, three. Give give it yeah, three, three people to highlight three. here. Uh, Dave. Uh, that is Dave Sessa, who spent weeks and weeks making that beautiful fanning out uh, of this uh, of the toothpicks and tile that make it work for any design that you could think of in a three by three grid. Uh, it was nothing short of incredible. Um, Sean uh, uh, Sean Sweeney for coming up with the idea of dropping a sheep out of the sky and also executing it, and making a really great like these are Desmos graphs. These are not animations. I mean, they are just the graphing calculator with pictures. Pretty amazing, um, and Faith, uh, uh, Faith Moynihan, uh, my colleague who uh, really steered this lesson um, start to finish on uh, Boggle or Collect the Squares. Tough to limit it to three though. For real, for real, definitely. Yeah, love, um, yeah, just folks don't even know. That's not like a, a JavaScript animation, uh, you know, or some kind of like, it's, it's, that's a graphing calculator, which when first built was not intended to be uh, an animation platform, but has wound up powering some of the most uh, evocative animations you'll see in a math class. Um, so folks, right now at that class code you've got on the screen, it's time for you to vote. I got 29 people in the chat. We got people, um, Ivan Cheng, a uh, colleague from SoCal, uh, so Cal uh, asking, why do we need to choose? We want it all. Well, we got to uh, pull these things out of the curriculum and polish them up so they're good for folks who aren't using the curriculum itself. Uh, takes a little bit of extra time. So we're choosing one. We're going light. We'll add more in later. Um, but again, if you want all of these, you folks know where to go, don't you? Um, again, that is learn.desmos.com slash curriculum. Smash that apply for 21, 22 button. And uh, we'll get you in that curriculum another time. Um, but and we'll, we'll have Zach back, we'll have other folks back to sh show off some of the fanciness and to offer you folks another chance to vote and get other activities. Um, it, I see folks lobbying each other in here. Um, Jamie Winslow saying uh, that 
She-Ra, the sheep, is better than flags. That's a big talk there, Jamie. Big talk. Um, disrespecting the flag. Don't want to do that in an election year or any year here. Scott has a great comment. I thought this was super interesting. Scott says, um, actually, so in She-Ra, the sheep, um, infinity ends at negative 16. That's kind of an interesting call. Like She-Ra kind of does that, that, that backflip there um, at the end at negative 16 versus continuing on to infinity. Is that right? I just kind of thought that was a, you're not screen sharing now, unfortunately, but I do dig um, the thoughtfulness with which we gotta like represent the math concepts well, even in evocative concepts like uh, sheep uh, eating grass. Uh, we got folks from Australia uh, on the call. Apparently it's like an, an Eric the sheep character. Do a whole bunch of math with, uh, with sheep, rock and roll. All right, let's see here. We got 41 people in uh, in the chat. I'm gonna call this. Uh, I'm gonna call this and uh, see who who won it. Codes on the screen. We got Martin Joyce lobbying uh, for toothpicks and tiles. Kathy Yanka, toothpicks and tiles. Aaron Quackenbush is going for shear the sheep. Scott, shear the sheep. Billy, shear the sheep. Billy's in our curriculum. Billy, I know you. Long Beach Billy. Uh, Billy the kid. He's in the curriculum. You've got all these Billy. They're coming out, coming your way. Um, let's see here. What if there's a three-way tie? Ivan's asking that. Ivan's doing some, this is some, some fancy game theory Ivan's up to right here. What if there's a three-way tie? If you folks are able to coordinate across uh, YouTube live here and manage a three-way tie, we will release all, all of them for a two-way tie. No dice. We'll pick our, we'll pick, we'll pick it. I'm picking Shear the Sheep on that one if there's a tie that, that includes Shear the Sheep. All right. Uh, Leanne, uh, the math teacher versus the kids here. I want to play with toothpicks and tiles, but the kids will want that sheep. All right, I'm gonna pause you folks. 50 folks in. Um, timing's off a little bit right here. You'll, you'll be paused sooner than you think, given the lag between YouTube Live and uh, and real life. I'm pausing now. Let's see. Wait, hold up, hold up. Who we got? Oh wow, this is tight. This is a tight one here. This is really, really close. Um, Zach, you would not believe. There's um, the winner is ahead by two votes. I'm going to give it uh, one more second here while Zach and I chat about something that's, that's just so special about these activities, um, especially I think uh, the collect the square um, is, uh, or uh, collect expressions rather, what is it, collect the squares. Yeah, it's just the way that, um, you know, we can present problems about adding expressions uh, one after the other, the same ones, but there's an element of student choice here and creativity. And I love that students can find the ones that are inverses of each other and uh, be strategic in their selections. And it just increases the number of ways that students can be brilliant in math class. And is there anything that's more necessary right now um, that students who need to have their brilliance recognized or mathematical brilliance recognized? Zach, tell us one more thing you, you like about any one of these three here that uh, uh, calls out to you while folks are voting. Gosh, it's close. One, point di one vote difference between first and second place here. <sighs> Holy cow. Wow, yeah. Hi, tie game, tie I... ball game right now. Over to you, Zach. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'd say the same thing. Uh, what you just said is true about toothpicks and tiles as well. There's so many different patterns to notice. Um, there's the relationship between toothpicks and tiles in a particular stage number. There's the relationships um, about tiles as you increase the stage number. There's relationships with toothpicks as you increase the stage number. And then there's all these edge cases, um, why they're happening, the creative things you can make and the things you can notice. Uh, it just uh, opens the floodgates of, and this happened um, even in the Desmos Slack channel as we were making this activity yes. of like, whoa, like I found this cool thing. I, like I was getting out my, my grid paper and sketching things and just kind of stopped building the lesson for a bit and just started playing and exploring. So like, I, I love when we create a little problem space that just has this depth where you can, and it's really just like a sinkhole of um interesting ideas that can pour out and that seventh graders can do like really sophisticated math and then would work in ninth and 10th. I mean, it's really an all purpose one, but I also love Shearer the Sheep. So I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, let me bring uh, back the screen share here. There's us. Okay. We're going to uh, come close to wrapping this up pretty quick here. Uh, this is, this was the votes here. I'm going to tell you right now, I paused it and let's see, let's, let's go to the tape. Let's see uh, as a photo finish here, folks, it's a tough one. The winner was by two votes, Shira the sheep. There's the folks. I'm gonna actually anonymize so folks that I don't get all, all, all panicky here seeing each other's real names. Um, close one all the way around. I think that is a, a vote of confidence that no matter what we're doing, some abstract mathematics like expressions and collect the squares or uh, visual patterns with tupas and tiles or some really concrete mathematics like Shira the sheep, there's ways to use technology to energize that and uh, folks are responding here. So. What this means, folks, is that Shear the Sheep coming at you folks in, um, if, you, if you're teaching it this week, 
you got to postpone that because it'll take us about a week to uh, get this out. Our colleague Jay Chow will handle that for us and um, we'll get this live pretty soon. Watch Twitter, check teacher.devs.com. That's awesome. Let's, let's wrap this up here, um, Zach, with a feature that we like to call um, for the first time ever. Um, people doing their best in a bad year. I just want to bring you folks this tweet right here, which I thought was fantastic. Check it out, folks. Um, been struggling to find ways for students to actually do the math instead of just receiving information. Today was a game changer using Desmos so that students could create their own scatter plots and I could check them and share it with the rest of the class in real time. Some pictures here that uh, our colleague uh, Garner, at Garner Loves Math is bringing up. Look at that right there. We've got students creating their own scatter plots um, of different kinds, a nonlinear scatter plot, a scatter plot that has a positive association in one cluster. Um, Zach, what's your take here? What are you seeing? Oh, I love this. Um, there's so much good stuff. Something that uh, we at Desmos strive for when we're building lessons is interesting ways of being right and wrong. And there's so much variety uh, and so many uh, sort of spin-off questions and new ideas that could come out of the creative approaches that students can take here. Um, like I'm looking at the, I'm not sure which which of the two images you're on right now, but um, if you're on that, the one on the left where they're making a positive association that has one yes. cluster. Some related questions are, that come up just when I see these. Uh, and, and there's so many different ones that I never would have thought of, which is great. Students can surprise you with their brilliance. It's like, okay, does it have to be linear, like perfectly linear, uh, the way uh, Godfrey Hardy's was? Um, can it be just like sort of linear, uh, like many of these are? What if it's curved? Can it still be positive and, and curved? Um, and if we look at the, the second set, the nonlinear ones, <laughs> these get even even wilder and also bring up some some interesting follow-up questions about whether, uh, you know, curves are okay, whether, like, the one in the lower uh, right, Norikus, um, like, what, does that one work, the criteria, or, or what different questions they answer correctly, uh, if not this one? So, a lot of good That's stuff to build on. Yeah. What, what different question does this answer perfectly? It's a great way to, to um, demonstrate to students that, hey, you did have thinking here that was valuable and to connect different ideas and to provoke students who got it correct, give them something more to think about based on that student's work. Um, that's a fantastic move there. Um, I'm, I'm super enamored with the top of the image here. I mean, check this out. Like, I don't know if you've been on our, our Facebook uh, group, Desmos Educators, but folks are in there trying to do some phenomenal things at a very, just a very challenging time. Like they're in there trying to learn our computation layer programming language and creating activities with all these interactions. This right here, all it is, is four screens, a sketch on each screen, and then two card sorts. This is a thing that, that you, can, you, can, you can create relatively quickly with um, little programming language, zero really. Um, and it's, but it's drawn out of students so much creativity so much brilliance, um, and it's put the teacher, this is the important part here, it's given the teacher a window into student brilliance, which is so hard to find when we're at a distance. Even in class together, it's hard to see students for uh, the brilliant ideas they bring to the table. Um, so I, just, I love the simplicity of the activity, and uh, but it did not elicit simple student ideas. It elicited, it invited complex stupid, simple student ideas here. So I would love for you folks, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, say a few words at Garner Loves Math. I'm also gonna toss um, this tweet into the chat right here. I hope you folks will uh, say something nice about uh, uh, about this tweet right here um, and show some love, show some love. Um, people need it right now. And uh, just know that we are inspired constantly uh, by you folks and what you are trying to do in a very challenging year. Um, you just it can't be said often enough um, how, how teachers are really carrying so much um, of their students' well-being, our country's economic well-being, to say, uh, say nothing of that. Um, so we're super impressed. Drop us a line. I'm Dan at Desmos. Um, Zach is Zach at Desmos with a CK, a CK, Zach. Um, remember that CH business. And um, just, just want to write out and say, uh, we got one person here who wants to see Murray, uh, who came here for the Murrays. Uh, put, some, put some thumbs up in the chat if you want to see uh, Murray pop on the screen here. see what I here. can do. And um, gosh, yeah, people, you just, you just did it. You, the Sheer the Sheep fans, you did it. Um, good games only to other folks in the chat. We'll see you uh, next time uh, once Murray pops on. We'll see you next time. And uh, for Desmos Live, stop on by. Yeah, there's Murray. Can't find the eyes. Where's, where's Murray the dog's lesson? Where's Murray the dog's lesson? That's what I want to know. That one better be coming in the works. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Zach, for popping on.
Thank you, Murray. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. Take care now. Need some theme music to ride out.